Hello and good morning, Hill City. Just to let you know, it's been crazy just to set this whole thing up. But welcome to Church Online. And thank you for just joining us and uh, being with us online and connecting. How's everyone doing? I know there's so many changes that are going on still, right? Uh, I'm seeing all these pictures on Facebook and on social media of uh, kids starting their new day of school. Some of them in their pajamas. Some of them, their parents forced them to dress up uh, and at least for the first day. But how are you guys managing? How are you guys managing emotionally, mentally, relationally? How are you doing at work? school, family. There's a lot of different moving variables that are happening right now that many of us are not used to. Uh, and, and just let us know in the comments below how we can pray for you or things that you guys are thinking about. Or you can email us at myhillcity, info at myhillcity.org. And uh, I think uh, these kind of platforms, especially online, works best when people are getting involved and uh, we're getting responses. But I just want to say this. To all those parents and and uh, that are schooling your students, it's like week one, you're doing a good job. You've never done this before. It will get better. Just don't give up and don't yell at your kids too much. We're praying for you teachers. We're praying for you students. We're praying for you workers. We're praying for all those people who are managing and just kind of getting through this. Uh, I just a couple of announcements that I want to throw out uh, to you. Next, uh, September 12th at 6 o'clock, that's going to be a Saturday. Um, we're going to have another outdoor service, so make sure you schedule that. Put that in your schedule. Also, the women's uh, book study is starting on September 8th. Uh, Cultivate, of course, Hannah is rolling. Urban Outreach is still going on. Uh, we are. Um, we just make sure you guys are having watch parties. And uh, if it's not for your sake, uh, do it for the sake of someone else, people who might need you. Also, we're starting a reading plan. Join us on that reading plan. You can catch that on Facebook, or you can comment below and say, "Add me to that reading plan." We'll send you a link. Also, a lot of things are going on in Ethiopia. And if you want to know more, here are a couple pictures of churches being rebuilt, uh, food being distributed, widows uh, starting businesses, and pastors being trained. A lot of good things are happening. Because even though we're not physically together, we're still on mission, practicing the way of Jesus through our actions and our faith, caring for others, our generosity, our joy, and our trust in God. I love the words of Hebrews 10. I love it written in the message. It says this, Let us see how inventive we can be in encouraging one another, love, uh, 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 encouraging love, helping out, and not avoiding worshiping together as some of us do, but spurring each other on, especially as we see the big day approaching. So today, we're finishing up our values, the Hill City values through the book of Acts. And, and it's just the values that we see in, in the church, the early church, as well as values that we must live by and we are guided by. Values that inform our decisions, even through hardships that we face and perseverance that we must get a hold of. Living life in the face of God, embracing the salvation, the gift of salvation, and the cost and the beauty of the grace of Jesus. Values from we worship, we proclaim, we serve, we gather, we confess. That was, uh, that was uh, what, what I did last time. And then Hannah spoke. We pray. It was so good. We pray. And then today is we train. We train to live in the way of Jesus. Say the word train. Train. Training. You, we understand that. And training fits perfectly the model of followers of Jesus because all of us we're in Jesus training we're in Jesus training right with that in mind I want you to go to the book of Acts chapter 11 I'm going to read you from verse 20 to 26 I'm going to give you some insight how the early church practiced training as their part of faith in Christ as disciples practitioners apprentices of their master uh, their master teacher Jesus see this is what it says in Acts 11 20 to 26 some of them just the church however 
men from Cyprus and Serene went to Antioch and began to speak to the Greeks also, telling them the good news about the Lord Jesus. The Lord's hand was with them, and a great number of people believed and turned to Jesus. News of this reached the church in Jerusalem, and they sent Barnabas to Antioch. So Barnabas was this trainer. Was just let's, let's read more about him. Just to understand... From Jerusalem to Antioch, that's about 300 miles. That's like going from Denver to Santa Fe. Think about that. Think about doing that on foot, right? But Barnabas was willing to do whatever it took to go wherever place he needed to go for people to know Jesus, to be set free from sin, and to be brought into the family of God, right? Verse 23, now he... When he, Barnabas, arrived and saw that the grace of God, what the grace of God has done, he was glad and encouraged them all to remain true to the Lord with all their hearts. Barnabas was a good man, full of the Holy Spirit and faith, and a great number of people were brought to the Lord. Then Barnabas went to Tarsus looking for Saul. We know Saul, right? Saul who becomes Paul, right? And when he found him, he brought him to Antioch, his home. So for a whole year, Barnabas and Saul, say Barnabas and Saul, Barnabas and Saul met with the church, that's the people of God, and taught great numbers of the people, and the disciples were called Christians first at Antioch. I love this. We see here Paul teaching and training under the tutelage of Barnabas for a whole year. This is where Saul becomes Paul, right? And we can easily skip over this part of his life. This, we can easily skip over this year. And, and, but, we, but we see here that this is where Paul became Saul. And discipleship here required training, submission, guidance under a discipler. This was the process of Jesus. And this is what he modeled. So here's the question I always ask us. Who are we becoming? Who are we becoming? The person that we have in mind. And if you need to stop the video here and write down some things of who we're becoming or questions like, what am I becoming? Really kind of looking deep within ourselves. Because if we don't know who we're becoming, the desires, and, the, and we, if we don't know the desires of God for our lives, we will unconsciously succumb to the roles and goals and discipleship of our culture. That's right. Our culture disciples us too right? There's systems and patterns and desires and identities in this culture. And, and, and sometimes Christians just mix and match, take this from here and that from here, and we mix and match, making like a Frankenstein sort of faith, mixing like a, a little bit of political party here and a little podcast idea here, media personality here, peppering in some Joe Rogan, some Michelle Obama or Brene Brown here while being sold by the algorithm of Amazon who collects all your data, that's right, to shape your mind so that you and I could be vessels of consumer spending. And with Instagram and TikTok defining beauty or your sense of acceptance or connection, your, fans, uh, your fashion and sexual desires, and then we sprinkle in some Jesus, right? Some spirituality. Listen, listen. If we do not know who we're becoming, we will be told who we are. I'm going to say that again. If we do not know who we're becoming, we will be told who we are. And, and we will just end up chasing the American dream, whatever that is, right? Because it's not specific anymore, right? Collecting more stuff, more access, more information while missing God's dream for us. For so many, I'm afraid that's our theology, who, the theology of receiving forgiveness so that we could be happy and get good jobs and live the blessed or the blessed life, right? Before we get into heaven. Most wouldn't say it this way, but I wonder if we live this way as our default mode of living. Church, church, we need Barnabases. We need more Barnabases. That's a weird word. Who will go out of their way to find Saul's and make them Paul's, training them in the way of Jesus at the cost 
to himself or herself, which is literally the call for every Christian. Let us expand that thought in our understanding of our own salvation. See, this whole thing sometimes comes down to our theology, what we believe salvation is. Because sometimes our understanding of salvation is too small. Yes, and salvation is justification, meaning we belong to Christ. We believe in Jesus. We confess Jesus. We belong to a church. We have our sins forgiven. We're justified before God. Yet salvation can't stop there. Salvation must lead us into transformation. See, we can't take transformation out of salvation. Just think about this. Can you imagine telling the early church that you could be a Christian without being a disciple, right? But today, we believe that. We believe that Christianity or salvation is different from discipleship. But in the, old, in the early church, you could never read into that. See, without transformation, without surrender, without generosity, without serving others, is it even Christianity at all? without making Jesus the primary reason for our lives, is that really Christianity? They wouldn't understand us. I believe it's time for all of us to rethink what it means to follow Jesus and rethink what it means to train, to train. Listen, it's funny because we understand that in the gym. We understand that when we're learning the guitar or learning a foreign language. But for some reason, it has been... uh, taken away from our faith so what do we think when we hear the word training i always think of the ufc for some reason because i really enjoy watching cage fighting because it's awesome right somebody don't judge me don't judge me did you know that the new testament writers use many uh, like these athletic metaphors of discussing christianity especially paul right he he would have liked cage fighting too i think uh, but, uh, but here's his many references that draw on to maybe the Olympic Games at the time. Metaphors are running with perseverance, fighting the good fight, the race marked out for us, winning the race, training the body. There was an easy connection between athletic training and Jesus training. The mindset, the commitment, the discipline, the perseverance. It was more than spiritual and experiential. It was a training that marked their whole life their whole life and we understand that when we watch athletes that their training marks their whole life yet when we look at our 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 walk of faith i wonder if we see it in the same way i love how paul puts it in second corinthians in second corinthians 5 14 to 21 he says for christ's love compels us say compels us think about that just being compelled if god is god he saved us he justified us he loves us he took on our punishment then we are compelled and it continues because we are convinced that one died for all therefore all died and he died for all that those who live should no longer live for themselves but for him who died for them and was raised again so from now on say from now on right we regard no one from a worldly worldly point of view with their goals and their systems right though we once regarded christ in this way we no longer do it this way therefore if anyone is in christ he's a new creation Uh, the new has come and the old is gone and the new is here all this is from god who reconciled us through christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation we have been reconciled and we move forward to reconcile right that god was reconciling you reuniting the world to himself in christ not counting people's sins against them and he has committed to us given us the message of reconciliation we are therefore christ ambassadors christ practitioners christ representatives as though god is making his appeal through us so we implore you on christ's behalf we shall we beg you on christ's behalf be reconciled to god come back to god fully god made him who knew no sin to be sin for us so that in him we might become the righteousness of god amen and amen we as jesus representatives his people his presence his loving message his truth to this world we have a huge task so we need to plan and we need to process the way 
we become more and more like him because training brings transformation not just trying i'm not talking about just trying this out i'm talking about training even when you don't feel like it, when you're tired when we have the best excuse here and here's a here's a list of things and, and it's a short it's more ideal ideology here of and i've told you this before but i want you to i want us to write this down again these are the things we practice number one practicing being with jesus practicing being with jesus learning to abide to remain and stay with jesus in every aspect of our lives not splitting the spiritual life and our real life i know you don't do that but so many think of their spiritual life apart from their real life and jesus needs to be part of all of life so when you're tired invite jesus there when you're worried and frustrated invite jesus there too when you're teaching and training your children invite jesus there when you're in the middle of your sin tell jesus look at me lord here i am messing up again i need your strength i need your love i need your hope i need your strength so instead of pushing him away we lean into jesus and we practice this abiding in prayer, in silence, in solitude, in study, even in our sadness, we keep abiding, we keep remaining, we keep seeking Jesus. Now, you also need to schedule your abiding, right? Make a time and a place to abide. Make it consistent. Start small, even if it's 10 minutes a day. I ask you, if you don't have a schedule of abiding, schedule of like being with Jesus, I would ask you to schedule it. Put it into your phone right now for 10 minutes a day. Start your day and end your day with Jesus. Do it tomorrow. And if you fail and you miss a couple of days, pick it up again. You know, a righteous man falls seven times, but he gets back up again. That's very important to get back up because you're in training. Practice allows us to take what's hard and make it regular until it becomes your natural inclination. Number two, practice becoming like Jesus. This is not a role or a title that we're taking up like a nurse or a cook or a doctor, but it's your character, your patience, your kindness, your forgiveness, your, your, your heart of peacemaking, your gratefulness. Character matters because we're becoming someone. That's why we deal with our past. We deal with our motives, our anxieties, our fears, our hidden sins. We need to get self-aware and God-aware. Number three, practice doing what Jesus did. This is, this is important. Being with Jesus and practicing the way of Jesus leads us to do what Jesus did. Luke 6.40 says this, The student is not above his teacher, but everyone who is fully trained will be like the teacher. So we practice the way Jesus lived, his way of life, generosity, care, encouragement, discipling, so that we can be like Jesus. I don't want you to like Jesus. I want you to be like Jesus. And there's no hack for this, none at all. You got to practice. You got to endure. You got to submit. You got to commit and do it again and again until it becomes your natural lean, your nature. Your and that's how transformation happens. Or... You will always walk in this spiritual frustration and start losing hope, losing joy, and losing the mission that God has placed in you in salvation because we lost the power of transformation through training. The way of Jesus plus the truth of Jesus gives us the life of Jesus, gives us the life of meaning, fullness, the life you've always wanted, the life your family needs, the life your workplace needs, the life your neighborhood needs, the life that you need. This is what Jesus expects of us. We're not building churches. We're building apprentices. The focus is not trying to get people into heaven but through the church, but trying to get heaven into people through discipleship. So in the middle of COVID, in the middle of not having a building, our focus is to train and build more Barnabases and send out Barnabases and bring in Saul's to become Paul's in homes and local places and online and when i say church i don't mean me i mean we because we are the church this is the mandate for all of us so if you find yourself today frustrated in faith if you feel stuck like i love what pete scazzaro says i've been a 22 year old christian 
but I feel like a one-year-old Christian 22 times. And if you need more from your faith and you know we need to train, we need to practice, we need discipleship. So here's a few things I want to remind us. First is a commitment, a commitment to Christ and a commitment to one another, a faithfulness. Show up, be present, be engaged, and be humble. Next, a schedule. You got to put spiritual health as a priority on your schedule. You can't say, ah, if I have time, then I will. No, it has to start with seeking God first. This is not trying, this is training. And finally, we need a trainer. You need to take a posture underneath someone to lead you. Trust in their leadership, stay humble, be a part of the team, and own your part of the process. And I guarantee you that your training will bring transformation and life to the full that Jesus was talking about. Let's pray. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I just thank you, Lord God, for Hill City Church. I thank you for all those who are listening. We are not trying, Lord God. We are in training. We're not just saved to be justified. We are saved to be justified, to be regenerated into Christ-likeness, Lord God, so that you would reign, Lord God. Your glory would be known all over, Lord God, and the lives of people, there would be good done for them, Lord God. I pray that we, as Hill City Church, would begin by a commitment and then schedule it and then find a trainer, Lord God. We are moving, Lord God, towards training every day, Lord God. And if people today who are listening to this need help, Lord God, I pray they reach out, Lord. They comment below. They email us, Lord God, because we're moving forward into your training, Lord. Change lives, Lord God, through your grace and move us by grace into transformation. In Jesus' name we pray.